Nikon just announced the 180 to 600 millimeter lens. If you are thinking about buying it, or the Sony 200 to 600, Canon 100 to 500, please hold on for 15 minutes and watch this video and hear my thousand dollar mistake of choosing a wrong zoom lens. Based on the specs, these telephoto lenses sound perfect from 180 millimeter all the way to 600 millimeter with image stabilization, great sharpness according to lab tests, and lightweight to carry around. Who wouldn't want that? We could save over $10,000 from buying prime lenses such as the 600 f4, 400 2.8 lenses, and still have the same reach to 600 millimeter, right? And for bird and wildlife, we never need to use 2.8 anyways. We want the whole subject sharp. We will use f7.1 or f8 anyways. So why waste money to get an f2.8 lens, right? Also, zoom lenses are much easier to use because you can first zoom out to find the subject, then quickly rotate the zoom rings to get closer to focus. Much easier to find subjects than using a prime lens. Imagine a 600 millimeter. The field of view is very narrow, like looking out from a straw. With so much advantages, it's definitely a no-brainer to get a zoom. Well, there is no free lunch. You may say, I know, of course, these lenses are not as sharp as the super expensive prime lenses, Tin Man. You don't need to remind me. But I want to let you know what's the truth. It may not be what you think. And it took me 10 years to figure out. And this video series is gonna be in two parts. I'm gonna tell you two things on how to choose a lens. And by the end of the series, you will have a much clearer picture. I'm Tim Lee, a wildlife photographer who is currently the judge of international contests such as Nature Photographer of the Year and Bird Photographer of the Year. My photography sucked in the first 10 years. It's not really because the lens sucks. The lenses were sharp, focused decently fast. The reason why my photos suck was because I suck. I suck in not understanding two important aspects of photography. Number one, how to have a better taste in using light. Number two, knowing what elements in a photo trigger emotion in the viewer. Let's go to number one, better taste in using light. Legendary photographer Jim Brandenburg in his book Chased by the Light said in the preface that photography is in Greek means painting with light. How good a photographer uses light tells how good their photography is. What does it mean? It's quite simple. The most dramatic light usually happens in early mornings and late evenings. In the morning, because of possible fog, the magical dreamy feeling before sunrise, then the first ray of light hits and the whole place turned red, then orange. Same for the evening, when the, when the fur of the animal, the hair of our subject, feather of a bird got lit up by the backlighting of the last ray of light. I drew this chart. Assume sunrise is at 7 a.m. 30 minutes before sunrise is 6.30 a.m. The sky would be filled with this ambient light into, the, into a purple pink color before the sun comes up. This is a photo of a snowy owl. I took it with a 600mm f4 lens. At 1 60th of a second, the slowest shutter speed to have a chance of a sharp photo at f4 ISO 6400. Now, look at this chart. If instead you have a 180 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3, so 600 millimeter, the smallest f number is 6.3. To get the same exposure, you still set shutter speed at 60th of a second because you can't go any slower, otherwise you'll get a blurry photo. Now, you can get to f4 because the smallest you can set is f6.3. You need to dial the ISO up to 16,000. That's too high. Even if you use noise removal software, the image would lose a ton of details. Most of the time, you have to stop down a zoom lens to get better sharpness. So you may have to set it at f7.1 or f8. Then ISO will be 20,000 or even higher. To me, anything 
lower than ISO 6400 is still manageable for print sales and magazine publication. So it means the zoom lens is basically useless in this situation. Okay, you say, well, you can fix it in post-processing, but chances are at this kind of low light, the f6.3 zoom lens would not even autofocus. The lens can only let in the maximum aperture of light onto the camera for it to do autofocus, meaning that a f2.8 lens always let in twice the amount of light than an f4 lens and let in four times the light than a f5.6 lens. So the autofocus speed should be proportional to it as well. It took me years to find out why the photos taken by my 402.8 lens always seem to be sharper than a 500 f4 lens. It didn't make sense as both lenses are supposed to be top notch. Later, I find out the sharpness has to do with the autofocus speed. The faster it focuses, the less lag time to allow the subject to move before the photo is taken. You may say, but, but Tin Man, the photos from my zoom lens, such as the 100 to 500 millimeter, are sharp. Yes, they are, I know. I have that lens too. But they fail to even autofocus in dramatic low light. And most of the great photos happen in those times. Now, this snowy hour wasn't moving, so 60th of a second may get it sharp. But one morning, I saw this male lion walking. I would need at least 320th of a second to get a sharp photo. I was using a 402.8 lens at f2.8, 320th of a second, ISO 3200. So assume at f4, it would be ISO 6400. At f5.6, ISO 12,800 and ISO 6.3 again is at ISO 16,000, unusable. So to put it in simpler terms, certain period in a day, I call it the 2.8 zone. Only 2.8 lens can still function to autofocus to create photos with acceptable quality. That's about 10 extra minutes before sunrise and after sunset. So I have so I could have taken over a thousand more photos before anyone else who doesn't have a 2.8 lens in great light. As the day gets brighter, it goes to what I call the F4 zone. That's still another 10 minutes or so before the F5.6, F6.3, and F7.1 lens can even function. By the time it gets bright, the light to me is really leftover light, the bad taste light. It may not be a good analogy, but let's think of light as fish. It's like you're shopping for fish in Whole Foods Market. The fresh caught and wild ones always taste better, but they are very expensive. Then they are the frozen ones and then the farm ones. No one wants to buy those that are a few days old packed in a bigger container, but the sellers may want to make you think it's a good deal by the discounted price and a big container. So it's just simple math. If you have a once a lifetime trip coming up and all the expenses add up to $5,000, but you ended up taking photos at ISO 16,000 in the critical moments, or the lens failed to even autofocus, then why even bother? Might as well just use your phone. You may say, but a 2.8 lens is so expensive. The good news is that there are older version of 2.8 lenses. I just checked. A used 302.8 is around $1,500. A used 500 f4 is $2,000 to $3,000. Yes, they may be heavier than the newest version, but they are super fast and super sharp. I would pick a used 302.8 over any zoom lenses any day. So to summarize for me, it's not the focal length, it's about the maximum aperture because I'm more concerned about its autofocus capability when in low light. Any zoom lens and prime lens focuses well in bright light, but that's not the zone I'm interested in. I've bought the Canon 100-500 for three years and may have used it once, so it's not really a complete waste. By the way, if you want to work with me on your photography, I have a mentorship program. Check out the link below. So to sum up, I share with you how to look at light differently by categorizing them into zones. And I told you the deciding factor when choosing lens. 
You can still choose to take photos in bad light like I did, feeling frustrated. Or you can think of what I just said, which really changed my photography in the last few years. Again, one can still get decent photos with zoom lens with big F numbers, but you are in a huge disadvantage, especially if you are doing bird and wildlife photography. At least that's what I learned in the last 10 years, wasting so much opportunities and so much of my previous vacation time only to find out is the gear that is hindering my progress. If you enjoy this video, definitely check out how I choose cameras here. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. Let me know what you think in the comment below. See you next time.